Welcome to part two of my 1.8 walkthrough. In our last one, we got down into Asurai territory, we got some troops, and now we are going to hit phase two. So I did get a question in the last video as to why I am using the Asurai troops. The tier two Asurai tribesmen, which become the tier three Asurai footmen, both of them have blunt weapons. So when you do the bandit bases, you get all prisoners. So we have just two objectives for, oh, can I catch him? I want to see if he's got a quest real quick. Horses. What do I have? I have three camels and four desert horses. Three desert horses will pay me 2300 Sure, I'll bring them to you. This is that gamble that I talked about, I think, in the last episode. And now it's paying off. So, I gained one renown, 2300 and eight points of charm. On horses that I bought for less than 600 and I sold for 2300 I made 1700 dinars. That's the gamble you take. And now my gamble paid off. At the very end when I'm leaving their territory. So to get back to today's episode. We didn't really get much in Kuzite land. So we are now going to... Or, I'm sorry, into Asari territory. We are now going to move into Kuzite territory. We only have two objectives for this entire part we are going to go do bandit bases turn them into laborers quest until we get about 40,000 in ours from there we're going to come down and do our horse trading to get 125 and get ourselves artisan community that is the only two things we are going to do for this episode that is it so once again, this will be highly edited as I'm not going to show you all the bandit bases and the travel times in between doing the trading. However, for the first bandit base, I will show you exactly what I do so that way you know what to do in your bandit base. While you're doing this, what you always want to look out for, where are the laborers quests? If you get troops, prisoners and you're full you want to be able to get rid of them so you want to always look out for them there are only four villages that can have the laborers quest it will be clay salt iron silver i already know where every one of them is that is salt that is clay and then the ones that have this symbol here is iron and silver so when you pass by them and you see, oh, he's got a quest. Look and see what it is. All right, he's got to train the troops. So I know he doesn't have one right now. So what I'm going to do is make a little quick pit stop. And I want to look, do you have one? All right, there's a little eye, meaning I'm in range. He doesn't have one. So let's move on. Check the towns to see if they have a bounty hunter quest that's a bandit base then check the villages to see if they have the bandit base quest those will let you immediately spawn a bandit base that's out there you can do both of them together you are only allowed to take one specific quest at a time however you can couple together a bounty hunter and a bandit base together to get two quests in one and I do not have a companion. And I, yes, the comment was made, and I do regret it, not picking up the companion I had. All right, we should be, oh, I need to check my weapon. Okay, I do not have a blunt weapon. I want to check for a blunt weapon. I like using a steel shaper. I feel it has the best balance of swing speed, damage, and length. Where if you take a look at a light mace, this one has a lot more swing speed, it has only 45 link compared to 72 and less damage. 
So I will invest in a steel shaper because I want the boss. Now from here, like the last game, we are going into Kuzite territory. So you might want to think about picking up horses to trade with them as well. Uh, we got a quest here. Always double check, you know, check your quests. You never know what it's going to have. Art of the trade. I will take it. Uh, what's going to happen is, is I'm going to 51 loads of grain for 280. That means I'm paying about five each. But what it's going to do, choose the top option and buy it immediately. And I just gained one free renown. Just like that. And if you get something, let's say salt or iron or anything like that, don't sell it at the town it's connected to. Take it to a different town where it's going to be more expensive. All right, this could be a laborer's quest. We do have a manual laborer's quest, which is great. So now we know we have one here. All right, we don't have a quest there, so let's go north. So we're going to go stop off and we're going to go now grab some horses. I want to travel fast, but I also want to have horses in case a lord needs horses. So I am going to pick up, we'll say, 10 horses. I don't think they're going to want step horses, but I think I'm going to pick up three just to be safe. They are a decent alternative for me. Oh, you can see I like HP, so they are a decent alternative. I love grabbing tools. They, that need tools quest comes in very important. And now that we're over, we do need to get a few more mules. They are nice and cheap here. And now we can go off looking for our bandit bases. There we go. Bounty hunters. We will now reveal a bandit base. There it is. So once again, I'm going to look. All right, they don't have a quest. All right, it's pure daytime. What you could do from right here, let me get up just a little bit further. Okay, that could have a bandit base quest. And you could then do both quests at the same time. However, if we travel up there, whether they have it or they don't, we might not be able to get back down here before nighttime and have to wait an additional day to go to the bandit base. So this is where you have to make the determination. Do you want to go check it out? It might not even have a bandit base. So because I don't think I can make it there and back by nighttime, I am not going to do it. So the first bandit base, I will show you exactly what I do. And then after that, I will start cutting them out. Now, unfortunately, we only have tribesmen right now. That's why I also grabbed horses because I do need to do some, a little bit of looter fighting to get these guys leveled. First thing I do, move my guys up. And let's get them moving. But what I want to do is get them right in here in shield wall formation. This is different than an As uh, Aserai bandit base. Just uh, put them there. Now they can go into shield wall. All you have to do is get close and they will start coming in. You don't actually have to hit them. Now, they have their spears out. If you tell them to charge, they'll pull their, um, their maces out. Guys will come from right here. That's why I'm looking right here. Just in case. All right, now I can run through the explanation. So I started running my guys up. And then I got, and then I told him to come to here and immediately put him in shield wall. And I leave them in shield wall because they have bows. All you have to do is get near someone. I always check here because there could be two, three guys here. And then there's two guys that walk through here. You don't have to hit them like in an Aserai bandit base. You just get close. That will aggro them and pull them in. As soon as the guys are coming in, I tell my guys to charge. Because they are in shield wall formation, they pull out their spears. 
I believe if you tell them to advance, they will continue to heat, have their spears out. That I'm not 100% positive on. So once I draw the guys in, I tell them to charge, they switch to their maces, but they still stay in shield wall because these guys have shields. Now I let them do the work. I do not want to do it. Even though I do have a blunt weapon, I do not want to do the work because I don't want to take damage. The Kuzite boss has a glaive and he can one shot you early on in the game. So I want to try to have as much health as possible in case he does hit me. This is also a little trick I do with the bosses. You can see I still have my crossbow out. This works with a crossbow or a bow. I want to wait for them to get done. And then I'm going to hit him once with my bow. And then switch to my two hand or my mace. And then that way I'll be able to one or two shot him with my mace. On a rare occasion, one of your guys might not switch out of his spear and might try to kill with his spear. Don't be too alarmed if that does happen. Once in a while it does. Um, you could tell him to go out of shield wall by hitting F2, F1, back into shield wall. You can tell him to charge again. Just sometimes they get a little buggy and they might not do it. But you can see they're all, they're, they took everybody prisoner. And I do... I like to duel the boss. All the guys behind him are going to be captive anyways. Whether I tell these guys to attack or not. But I have wiped. Because he has a glaive. He can one-shot my guys. And that can turn the tide very quick. So as soon as I hit very well... Immediately fire, switch your weapon. Fire, switch weapon. And now he's one shot or one shot or two shot. And there is your bandit base. We got all the prisoners. That 13 is how many were total, not including those guys behind. So that is uh, what, two, four, five behind. So it's gonna be like 18, 18 prisoners. And now, the most exciting thing about it is potentially the loot. Now, unfortunately, this was a newer bandit base. But when bandits defeat villagers in caravans, they'll take the prisoners and the loot to the bandit base and stock it up there. You could potentially get very expensive things like velvet early in the game. We didn't, but that's fine. So we have one bandit base done. And great, we did get Warlord as well, so that's more renown. And now what we're going to do is because we know that there is a bandit base here, or a laborer's quest, excuse me. We are now going to head down. Oh, man, I wanted him. We're going to head down there. And then if you lost any guys, this is a great chance to recoup and grab more Asari troops. Because when you get up in here, you can't get Asari troops. And then you never know, one might pop right here as well. There's a band of base that can pop there. So we're going to now go get rid of these because we took 18 prisoners. We only have room for eight more. So if we do another bandit base, we'll be able to collect a more higher tier troops. But there are some we'll have to leave behind. I'm going for him next. So when we do a laborer's quest, never ever talk to him. If you talk to him, then you're going to have to leave out and you're going to have to talk to him again to complete the quest. If you do that, there is a chance that the headman will interrupt your talk and not be happy with the labor. And if he does that, he's either going to want, he's either going to, you're going to have to say, I'll abandon the quest, which will make him mad. You're going to say, I'm going to do the quest anyways, which will make him mad. Or you could split the profit from him. But if you visit him, you can now talk to him to get the quest. And now you don't have to leave and you can talk to him again to complete the quest. And this is why the, uh, the Kuzite bandit bases are the best. One bandit base got me... 
6,185 dinars. One base. That doesn't include the loot I got. So we now are back up to 11,000. So we are going to do approximately five to seven more bandit bases. We want to get to clan tier one and have about 40,000. That is our objective. So let's go get those. Uh, hopefully, there they are. I want to get these guys to tier three. Well, actually, there's a bunch to tier three. Holy cow. But I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to leave them at tier one and two because they'll get more EXP for the group. And I could take these and drop these guys off. But now you will see. Now, you don't have to upgrade all these guys. You only need nine. So what you could do is just leave nine ready to go. That way, you're not paying the wages for the rest of these guys. But having 34, be careful because if there's like two large groups of bandits, they could jump you because you're not very high powered. So we are now 100% set up, ready to go. So once again, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go take a quick look-see. Does that have a quest? It does have a quest. Will this be a laborers? And we have a laborers. So we now want to keep in the back of our head, laborers quest. Now, once again, let's go look at all the towns and all the villages. Deliver the herd we do not want to do. All the way up in here, there's a bandit. So I'm assuming there is a bandit base here. Either up in here or over here. But like I said, we don't have a good scout. So that really sucks. It's going to make it a lot more difficult finding these bandit bases. Yeah, there's one here. Where is it? Right here. 36. That's what I talked about. You could get jumped by 36 of them. And then if another group of 10 comes up, then they're going to want to go after you. I cannot find the base. There it is. Watch for that 36. This is where I'm Because now, see, you got 14, 18. I got right now 22 of them sitting here. That 36 pops up. I'm getting attacked. Here comes the 36. So I am now going to go ahead and upgrade. They just walked right by me. Now is when I'll start doing the editing. That one went pretty smooth. And now after this one, it's going to be really, like I said, highly edited. I'm going to immediately go right to Labor's Quest, Bandit Base. Just, you know, one cut after another. But I'm going to show you a really quick, kind of almost the route that I take. Yeah, it's a little slow. Now, all of them are prisoner. 18. Any good loot? And eh, we got some vamp. All right. That's not bad. Okay. Now, that is done. So, I don't want to fight those guys. That's not going to be a good fight. So, now, I need to go find a laborer's quest. I, in fact, know that, we're, that we had a laborer's quest down south. So, now what you want to do is go right to your labor's quest. From there, get your next bandit base. Do the labor's quest, bandit base, over and over and over again. And kind of, you could take this route and go back up and just go round and round. If you need more troops, stop down here where you can grab Asurai troops. And there's a bandit base that can pop here and a labor's quest here. So, now I'm going to do the little montage and start doing highly edited. Where you can just see Bandit Base, Labor's Quest over and over again until we're done. Which we want to hit Clan Tier 1 to rescue our brother. And then have 40,000. 
Here's our manual labors. Visit. And once again, it's going to be virtually the same thing that we got on the last bandit base. And there we go. We got ourselves 6,000. All right, we are up to 15,700. We do need to get a companion. We only need nine more renown. So I'm going to look for the next bandit base. And I'm going to look for a companion. So I found my next bandit base. And this is something I wanted to run through. When you see a help with Brigand's quest, that means a bandit base is close by. If you do the bandit base, this quest leaves. However, I do want to show you something that you can do. If you take this, you have to fight two band friends of, of brigands. Now, all these brigands that come by will have the exclamation mark and they won't run from you. So what you can do is this. Boom. And then sim it. I took a prisoner. And now they won't leave. They're just, and here we go. Here comes the five. And you could wait for bigger packs if you wanted to. If you don't want to wait, simming always gets you more prisoners. And there you go. I got four of them. So now when I do this bandit base, I'm most likely going to get, what, 18? Which means now I have 22, and I completed the quest. And, you know, it got me charm. I got 18 charm out of it. That's 1.8 charm. They're going into the points. Now I can go ahead and I can do the bandit base. And we didn't lose anyone. So once again, I'll use my normal technique. Pop. One shot. Take all the prisoners. We now got 22 prisoners. Ah, oh, we got, look at that, we're 500. We only need two more Renown. And here's our next manual labors. This will be another 5,500 to 6,000. Well, this will be more, because we did that quest. 7,500. And there you go. We are up to 22,000. And we need just one more bandit base or a quick fight to establish the clan. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. If you get a caravan ambush in either Akalot or a dock, it's going to go to these two. It should go to, oh, the Akalot should go to a dock and not to Oak Guard. Very rare chance that it could. But this is going to allow me to establish the clan. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And what are you doing? He's going to go to a dock. He's going to pay me 1450 So I'm going to do it myself. Make sure we got full troops. And now we're going to do this. You got to stay away from it. You'll get one warning to get away. And if you don't, you'll, it'll get attacked. And now we'll target them. Boom. Sim it for prisoners. Done. They can go for a manual labors. They don't pay as much, but they can. We get all this juicy loot. Done. And now we have established the clan done. This is something very, very important. Wherever you go, your city, to establish the clan, that is where your family will originate from to start until you get your own feet. However, let me say this. Whatever city you do do it in, you will get a bandit base to complete the quest that is faction or culturally specific. Therefore, by me establishing the clan anywhere here, it is going to give me a free Kuzite base. Now, the reason why I'm going to say this is because let's say you have a bandit base right there. You do not want to establish the clan right away. 
because if you do, it will then have you do the bandit base there. That's already located and already revealed. Do the bandit base first, then come establish the clan, and they'll pop another one for you. So you're getting two for the price of one. So finish a bandit base first before you establish the clan. And there's our bandit base. So now we could take a bunch of troops we want to. We want to get as many troops as possible because now we can hold a lot more prisoners. So that's something really important to think about now. Get as many troops as possible. That way you can hold as many prisoners and you don't need to go back and do a manual labors every bandit base. You only have to do it every two bandit bases. So, same tactic as before. Boom. And he's gone. Um, this is important to also, let's say you have too many troops. Uh, early on, like let's say you have three bandit bases around, you can't find a labor's quest. Don't be afraid to do another bandit base. All you do is take the highest level troops. To easily do that, Let's say we have these troops sitting over there and I can only take, let's say, 18. All you do is this. Put them all over there. Put them all over here. It will only take the highest levels first. So it's a very quick way of taking just the highest levels. That way you're going to do an, another bandit base, but you're going to have higher tier troops, which are going to pay you even more. So don't be afraid to grab an extra bandit base when laborers quests aren't available. Take all the troops you can, so that way you have more carrying capacity for prisoners. And now, let's get through this. Now that we have this established up, it'll be an Akalot. But now we want to get full troops, because by getting full troops, we can now carry 31. We're going to be able to carry closer to 40 meaning we can now do two bandit bases at a time without having a laborer's quest. It has to update. Is it just 36? That's two bandit bases right there. So now we can do two bandit bases before we need a laborer's quest. So now I'm going to pick up my big brother. And now we are going to go and we're going to go find a laborer's quest. Here's our laborer's quest. And we're going to get just a little bit more because we did do the caravan ambush. Those guys don't pay good. But those mounted ones from the caravan ambush, they do count. So don't be afraid to do those. And this one brought us 7,400. Oh, we are now up to 30,000. We only need really about, ooh, extortion by deserters. We only really need two more bandit bases and we're done. However, I'm going to take the extortion by deserters. Because this gets you two free renown if you give them the money. So this is something I have talked about many times before. We want the prisoners, so we're going to upgrade these guys. Those guys we will go sell. We get all this gear, and now you have the option to talk to them. And when you do, you can take the money, and you can get a little bit of relation and charm. You can, give them, you can take half the money, get more relation and charm, and one renown. Or you could tell them to keep the money, gain a lot of relation and charm, and get two renown. Uh, it says 1.8. All right, we are done with that. We are now going to look for our next. Uh, actually, before we do that, I know this video is going to run long. Okay. I know it will, but I want to include both of these sections in one video 
as I don't want to space these out over the course of a month. So just please be aware of that fact. And we do have another band, uh, Caravan Ambush. Which I'm going to end up taking. Because it's going to be money. But now, watch this. After we sold everything off, we're up to 33,000. We're almost there. And once again, oh, we got those prisoners. Once again, I'm going to sim it. And done. So now with these guys, I got to remember to go off and sell these guys because they don't count for laborers quest. But these guys I want to hold on to. We found our next bandit base and get down there in time. Uh, there was only one left. Oh, we did get two prisoners. Cool. But we now have our next bandit base. He's going to attack him. Help him out. Two more. Same tactic. Pop. And gone. And now we need to go find ourselves a laborer's quest. So I had to come all the way over here to find a laborer's quest, which I did find. Do not be discouraged if that happens. Let's get rid of all these guys. Eleven thousand, and we now have forty-four thousand. So now we do have enough to start right now. So, as I said, don't be discouraged because you do not really want to start horse trading before day 75. If you do, the profits are going to be lower because the economy hasn't stabilized. Horse prices increase over time. So, by day 75 or so, you might get 300 to 350 selling desert horses. But by day 125, you're going to get 400 to 500. And profit equals trade. So I now have 44,000. I am over the mark that I want. Now I have two choices. I could go back and run, do more bandit bases to make more money, or I can immediately start trading. The more money you have, the quicker it is going to be. Also, the later in the game, the quicker it's going to be to trade. That is what you are going to have to decide. But along the way, make sure you check for quests. I have been doing an absolute ton of village needs draft animals get you know having extra sumpter and mules on me to make extra money which is why you haven't seen me do that many bandit bases this run however for the purposes of this video we are going to go but before we go there's one last thing i want to do and that is an extortion by deserters Because that's going to be even more money. Do quests. Take those prisoners. We'll sell them off. And all this beautiful gear. And once again, you have the choice to make. I always let them keep it. I want the relation and the charm. But more importantly, I want... Um, I want that. Because right now, 
once we get to clan, we can get what we can get two shops right now. But once we get artisan community and we start getting renowned, we're going to get clan tier two very quickly, which means another companion and another shop. So let's go sell off all of our gear and let's see what our grand total is. Forty-five thousand. But now, what I could do also is, I have horses to sell. All these horses, sell them. This is a great spot to sell. Mules, one hundred and sixty-five. Be careful going too far over. But there. I just gained 15 points of trade. I'm up to 32 and I haven't even begun yet. So I now have 54,000, a great mark to have. And I was looking to see if there was another quest, but now I know that took a lot longer. And like I said, I wanted to incorporate both of these in the video. We are now done with that. And we want to get done right around day 70 to 75 in that mark. Don't be, don't be afraid to go over. We are at day 80, which is great. It's exactly where I want to be. I am perfectly happy with that. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to run to Hubyar and Iacus. We're going to grab horses, take them to Legata and Vertel. Sell them off. We are then going to come back down to Askar, grab all their horses, and take them up to here. Once you sold all the horses, you're going to come back down to Iacus, Askar, and then you're going to take them back up through here. If you are short at all, you can then run back down to Iacus and Askar and run them back through again to the ones that you've already been to before, but start over. First, we did Legate and Rito, then we came through here. That will get us our 125. That is the route we are going to take. I've just explained it there, but now I'm actually going to show it as we do it. And I'm also going to show you how to go ahead and get additional trade by taking trade goods as well. So let us head down to Hubyar. All right, so we are down here. We're going to grab all the mules, all the desert horses, and all the asteroid. Now you're going to have to be careful if you don't have enough money which is a distinct possibility, you might not be able to grab everything. So be very mindful of that. How we also help off offset, I say offset, but it help with the income is take stuff that is very cheap that you can sell. Dates are a great thing to take along the way. We're not going to get anything else here because we're going to be able to pick it up cheaper. All right, so we picked up everything we wanted to. Uh, make sure you get full troops to cut down on your herd penalty because you're about to see a massive herd penalty. We might be traveling at 3.7, 4.8 during the day, but in just a moment, we're probably going to be down to 1.3. This is also where you need to be careful because we are not making any profit. So you need to have enough money, wages, to get you up there. Once again, all the mules, um, I'm going to take all the Asurai horses, and now be, this is where you have to be careful. Oh, we got them all. All right, can we take anything else with us? I am going to, uh, not really. You want to make sure you have enough food variety to get up there, but they don't really have anything good. So our speed is going to be 3.1. So now we are going to go up to, you just got to make sure you have enough money. I got 10,000. That's 35 days worth of wages. Uh, figure it's going to take you at least 15 days or so to get up there. 20 to be safe, but it's probably 15 days. So calculate your wages. You're going to need somewhere between about three and 4,000 to get up there. So this is where we're going to start cutting it out now. Hubyar, Iacus. We're going to Legata and Rattel. We reached here. 
And now my general rule is mules over 75, desert horses over 300, and ass rye horses over about 1100. However, the earlier you are, the lower the prices are going to be. And on this first run, don't be picky. Just get rid of them. Down to light green. And we got way too many Asurai. Also, look. I mean, look at the dates. Oh, we got olives here. Grab some olives. All right, good, good, good. I want to grab grapes. And now we head over to Rito. Also, make sure you have points ready to go. I've already planned it out where I have three points into trade, seven into social, and that will get me to 125, no problem with my learning limit. You can spend less, but it will take you longer. You could put more points into it and it will be shorter, but you'll have less points to spend. So plan this out ahead of time. And once again, let's get rid of them. Ooh, nice. Very nice. And what are we at? 70. So, very, very good. And now we're going to do Asgar up into Volandia. But don't be afraid on this first one. Take it down to the light green. We just want to get rid of it. We now have 61,000 in capital. We didn't get rid of all of our Asurai horses or we had more. Resist the urge to buy a workshop, okay? You're going to see in a moment we need all this capital to help do what we're about to do once we get to Asgar. All right, so we just arrived at Asgar. Make sure you got, once again, full troops. But now... We buy everything. I'll even buy the Sumters. And then you want to also buy this stuff. Now, I do have a problem with this meat. This is going to be an issue. The meat that I got from doing the quest will not count towards my trade. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to get rid of all the meat. I'm going to take a little bit of a loss on it. But now I'm going to buy it back. And then I'll buy all the cheese. All the dates. Unfortunately, they don't have a brewery. And... Uh, that's way too many sumptures. You can see we're down to 1.4. But this is where you're also going to need the capital. Because we are now going to go to Sanala. Before we head up there. This is where we're going to help out our trade right now. First time run, we should be able to get rid of some mules. Which, not many. But we're going to get rid of some. And now, what we're going to do is we're going to buy the fish. Now, be careful on fish. Fish has been a tough sell lately. So, I'm only going to take it to 10. And buy the dates. And uh, sadly, they do not have a brewery. So, that really sucks. I was kind of hoping that they had a brewery. Um, but now we went and helped and we got the fish and the dates to help us get a little bit more. But now we are going to take our trip up here. And as I've said before, never target a city. Because if they go under siege, it stops. And this is the perfect time in which I take a break and grab something to drink. So target just in front of it. And then that way, when you get there, time will stop. So now we are going to slowly make our way up there and get rid of all these horses. So we're coming up to Sargat, and it's probably going to be a little bit low on the numbers here. Your first trade is going to be a little bit lower. Now mine will be a little bit better because I'm probably close to day 100 now. So my numbers will be a little bit better. But if you're closer to day 75, these will be lower. So once again, 75, 300, about 1100. For the mules, they are tied to the same price, so I get rid of the mules, but I watch this price. So first, let's get rid of the Sumters. 
we want to take it down to about 75. Desert, 300, and that's it. Check these. Look at the meat, 24. There, we'll get rid of the meat. And now, off to Jocelyn. Once again, down to about 75. Fish has been tough. Fish has been really, really tough lately. They don't go up in price very quick. It used to be a great way to make money. Ooh, that's bad. And they have fish. But they have everything you need. So I'm going to pick up some more. I'm just going to pick it up. The fish, I'm still going to pick it up. Just because it will help bring down the price of mine. But now, uh, we're up to 85. Let's go up to Ox Hall. We're hoping to get about close to 100 in this initial trade. 100 would be amazing. Which I think now I'm going to go back down. Let's get rid of it. Let's get rid of it all. We want to get rid of as much as possible to cut down there. We have no, we're down to 3.3. We're at 94, which is decent. It's not terrible. So now for the second round, pick up all of them in Iacus, pick them up all of them in Ascar, and now we're going to run up into Batanian territory. Once again, buy them all up. Meets 19. Uh, they, they don't have anything here. All right, over to Ascar. Buy him up again. It's a band. Buy everything up. Desert. We have 28,000 left. I'm going to buy the Sumters. I could buy the Pack Camels. And the camels. I'm going to buy up everything. Eight. Wow, they just don't have it. All right, from here. Oh, let's make sure we got full troops. That can help our herd penalty later. Now, we do not want to touch the places we've been. We want to let them get rid of the horses. So on our last trade, hopefully our last trade, they've gotten rid of most of them and will pay a high price. So we're going to go right to Penkanok, Dunglanus, Marina. That's our our next stops that we're hoping. And we want to be up close to about 110 to hopefully 115 when we're done with this run. And let's see the prices. Get rid of the pack animals first. Like I said, the, the mark is 75 for mules. And then we'll get rid of the camels. Look at that. 400. That's what we want to see. And we'll get rid of him. That'll bring down that price a little bit. And once again, we just can't get rid of that fish. That is the issue. 102. Like I said, 110 to 115. Closer to 115 would be amazing. Nice. Very good. 
Finally, we can get rid of some. One oh eight. Working good. Really want to be over that one fifteen as possible because that last run, if we can do it, then we only have one run left to do. But if you're sitting at one oh five, maybe to one ten, you might have to pull another run. Beautiful. And I should have mentioned this before. Don't be afraid to hold on to a few horses, not pack animals, horses. They'll help you travel faster. See, we're 3.7. I'm going to get rid of a little bit more of these because I want to travel. Now I'm up to 4.1. So get rid of a few more of them so you can travel faster. 116. That is great. Very happy. I think we can finish it with just one more trip. So we're really hoping this is the last run. And I probably did some things wrong that I should have done differently, like tools. I probably could have grabbed tools up in Batania for like 50 and taking them up north. You see here, these are $2.99. So that's where I talk about kind of offsetting some of the costs. But man, they don't have much. Look at that. They don't have much at all. But once again, we take everything. This time, full troops. We're going to go back up to Sanala. Uh, prices are not good. Okay, we'll hold off. Let's check. They got some dates. See, they got more fish, so we're going to take the fish. We'll take it only to nine. Good. Um, I could grab grain. It's only at five, but it just doesn't have a super high price. It's already up to six. So I am going to hold off. Once again, here you go. Tools, 199 This is something to think about. Uh, look at Marineth, 150, you know, grab it. Tools is a really good thing. Tools and hardwood, I think, are the two biggest. Grab the tools and hardwood from Batania and bring it down here. It'll do you good. This time, we're going the opposite, or we're going to go the original route we took. So I'm going to go to Legata, Rateau, and then all the way over back into here to finish it off. But wait till you see the prices. Last time we were up here, they were about just right around 300 for desert and about 1,000 for war horses. Watch the difference this time. So let's see the prices this time. 426. That's the difference between trading at day 75 to 80 and trading now. The price is so much different. Look how much that is. And we're going to hold off on the pack animals. We can get rid of just a little bit. Look at the pottery. 100. All right, good enough. 120. We got five more. This is going to be close. This is going to be exceptionally close. I made the mistake. I should have bought hardwood and tools from Batania or Valandia. And took it down to Asari territory. And if I would have done that each run, I would be 125. It's when you see something super cheap, grab it. You have all the pack animals to carry it. So don't be afraid to grab it and take it. Yeah, they don't have the pack animals here. Oh, look at the Asari horses. Wow. Yeah, that's the problem. They, as the game goes on, it gets much harder to trade pack animals. Let's see what we're at right now. 123. All right, we're going to finish it off right now. We're done.
124. Oh, you're going to be a pain, aren't you? You are going to be an absolute pain. 125. There you go. Artists in community. So we are now done. We have everything that we need to do. And in our next episode, we're going to tie up all the loose ends that we need to do. We're going to go get our wives. We're going to get all our companions. We're going to get our workshops. We're going to get everything done that we need to get done. So we can either smith, become a merc, or prepare to become a vassal. So stay tuned for episode three. I will have all the times up on the screen so you could see how long it took this session and our total time so far. So we have one episode left until we are ready to basically do anything else we want to do in the game. And we're going to be sitting close to Clan Tier 3 by the time we are done with it. And we got 103,000, which is decent but it will serve our purpose in the next episode. So once again, I apologize if it ran long. I won't know how long until editing, but I really wanted to get as much of these out as quick as possible and not take a month to get released because I only release two a week. So I will see you in the next episode. Take care and thanks for watching.